Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel, Kaylee here. Um, as a lot of you know, if you've been following along, we have converted this 2005 Dodge Sprinter into our dream home on wheels over the past six months. And I wanted to make a quick video to go over making these cushions because when I was looking online, the cushions were super expensive. I couldn't find any that were exactly the size that we built our bench or exactly the color or the style that I wanted. So it was actually relatively, I'm gonna say re relatively simple to make. It did take me a couple hours, but I am a total newbie when it comes to sewing. So if I can do it, you can do it. So as you can see, it is pretty simple. Um, we've just got two cushions and then we want this back plate here. So the cushions both have a zipper on the back, which is very handy because although this is indoor outdoor material, um, obviously we've got Bailey in here and if it gets dirty, we wanna be able to take them off and give them a wash. So we can very easily do that. And then this back piece here actually just hooks on like that. And it's just a piece of plywood and um, it's just got some batting and some material on it. So I actually made these buttons, super, super easy. We will get into that right away. So obviously if you're watching this video, you are converting your own camper van and you probably have a different layout or at least different sizes than we have here. But I'm gonna show you what we have and what works for us and you can kind of modify accordingly. So under our bench seats, we just kind of lined the top here with some auto lining material. We used it for our shelf and a couple different things just to make these look finished and it also helps the cushions from sliding around. And under this bench here, we've got a little shoe rack. I'm gonna um, line the inside with this material too, but you can also access it from the back and put your shoes in, which we're pretty pumped about. And then under this other um, seat here, we have got another storage cubby. So I'm sure that you guys have got the point by now that David and I are all about the storage. It was the one thing in the camper van that we rented that we didn't feel like there was enough of. So we're working very hard to make use of all of our space. So for this project, you are going to want some three inch foam. You're gonna want some batting, um, some material, I got an indoor outdoor, two meters of it was plenty for this. If you have a larger space, you will probably need more material. You'll obviously want a sewing machine and two zippers is what I used for my two cushions. If you have three cushions, you'll need three zippers. And then finally for the back piece, you're gonna want a piece of plywood. Um, you're gonna use more batting, some material and however many buttons you want to incorporate if you want to put the buttons on there. Um, I'll show you how to cover them up with fabric. And just because our van is curved here, we put a one by four down at the bottom just to kind of level out the backboard. Depending on where your seat is and what the wall behind looks like, you may or may not need that. Now, step one is to figure out how big your cushions are gonna be and how many cushions you're gonna have. So you are going to measure out the area. And ours is about 54 and a half long and 14 and a half wide. So I decided to make two cushions and they are actually not exactly the same. So one cushion is 28 inches and one cushion is 26 and a half inches. And that's just because our storage cubbies are not equal in size. So our shoe cubby is a little bit smaller than our storage cubby and I wanted the cushions to sit kind of right on the seam. Next up is cutting your foam. So once you have your cushion sizes measured, you're gonna cut the foam to that exact size. So one piece of foam I cut to 28 inches by 14 and a half inches and the other piece I cut to 26 and a half by 14 and a half inches. I just used an X-Acto knife to cut the foam and I drew out and measured on both sides of the foam. So started on one side, cut it out to about halfway, flip the foam over, cut out the other side and that just helps to kind of keep your cut even. Next up, you're gonna add some batting. So first of all, just place your piece of foam onto the sheet of batting trace around it and cut around the edges on both sides so the top and bottom both have a piece of batting that will fit on them. I just used a spray adhesive to attach the batting to the foam and then I actually wrapped the foam once in each direction with a full loop of batting and I used the spray adhesive and that just gives my cushions a much fuller look um, which I like. Next up you're going to start cutting the fabric so you want to cut one piece for the top and one piece for the bottom first and take your original dimension so mine was 28 by 14 and a half and you want to add half an inch for each side so add an inch in total to each of your dimensions so my 28 by 14 and a half cushion will have material that is 29 by 15 and a half once you've got those cut we're going to move on to the boxing around the cushion now to measure that you're going to add up all four sides and then subtract the length of the side that you want your zipper on so for me i wanted my zipper on the back so i added up all four sides and then i subtracted 
28 from that total that gives me 57 I added one inch on just to allow for seam allowances which gives me a length of 58 inches and for the width you're gonna go one inch higher than your foam so my foam is three inches I'm gonna go with a four inch width next up you're gonna cut your zipper panel so for me that is my 28 inch side is gonna be my zipper side I bought a 26 inch zipper just to allow a little bit of space on each side and then again I added one inch for seams the zipper panel came out to 29 inches long to calculate the height of your zipper panel you're going to do the same thing we did before so whatever width your foam is you're gonna add one inch my three inch foam I added one inch but then on top of that you also add the width of your zipper so my zipper was 1.5 inches wide which means that my zipper panel will be 5.5 inches tall now the zipper panel seems a little bit intimidating to make, but it actually turns out really well. What you're going to do is fold your fabric in half with the right sides facing, and then you're going to sew along the fold with the seam allowance of half the width of the zipper. So my zipper was one and a half inches. My seam allowance will be 0.75 inches, and that's how far in from the fold I will sew my line. Next, cut down the center of the seam that you just sewed, and then open it up. Place the large part of the fabric face down on the table and place the zipper face down on the open seam. Now I read that you needed a special foot to sew the zipper on. I did not have a special foot so I just used my regular foot and it worked okay. Um, so if you don't have a zipper foot, you can try without. If you do, I'm sure that's probably better. But you want to sew down each side of the zipper and you might have to just stop and pull the zipper down a little bit once you get to the top so that you can sew around and it doesn't get in the way. To really secure the zipper, you're gonna wanna sew back and forth on each edge of the zipper and then flip the panel over and cut open the seam with a seam ripper. Sew together one end of the zipper panel with one end of the long thin boxing piece you cut out and then center the zipper panel on the long edge of either the top or bottom piece with the right sides facing. Sew along the edge of the zipper panel and the bottom panel, keeping that half inch seam allowance. Just before getting to the corner, you're gonna wanna stop, put a couple little snips in the edge of the fabric to help it stretch and then turn your fabric and start going on the other side. You can do this all the way around until you come back to the zipper panel. And then once you've made it all the way around, you're gonna want to join the end of the boxing to the other side of the zipper panel. If you have a little bit extra, you can always trim it off, but you should be pretty close on fabric here. Now you're gonna do the same thing with your other piece of large fabric. So you can start at the zipper panel again and make your way all the way around, making sure to add those little snips in the corners and completely turn your fabric before beginning each new side. And finally, you're gonna turn your cushion cover right side out, put your foam with your batting inside, zip it up, and you're good to go. So I repeated that same process for my second cushion. Second one went a lot quicker and smoother than the first, so I hope the same goes for you. And then I moved on to this back piece. So originally, David and I had thought about doing cushions similar to this on the back, but we thought when we were driving, they'd be falling all around. Um, there's not a ton of sitting room here to begin with, so we wanted something kind of close to the wall. And we settled on this because I really like the look of it. It's solid in place, we can remove it. Um, it's still cozy, but it's, it's not falling around. It's just a little bit cleaner and neater. So the first step here is going to be measuring out how big you want to cut your plywood. So I measured from this bottom corner, and it's about 41 on the bottom there. And then make sure to measure from the top of your cushions, not the bottom of your cushions. And see how high you wanna go up. So I think I told David about 15 inches is how high I wanted it. We've obviously got a bit of a funky shape here. So we cut the box first and then David just traced this out and was able to cut that out next. Next up, I covered the plywood with about three or four sheets of batting and just wrapped it a couple inches over the back. And then I wrapped that in my material and stapled it all along the back of the plywood, making sure to take extra care around the edges and to kind of make sure that it looked good from the front where I was stapling it. To make these cute little covered buttons, I took some of the spray adhesive and just some big buttons that I found at Walmart that I like the size of. I cut a circle of this fabric and then placed the button face down on the fabric and with a thread and needle, I just sewed kind of the whole perimeter of the circle of fabric pulled it tight and tied it off. I decided on three buttons, so I obviously measured out to make sure that the three buttons were equally spaced and that they were equally spaced from the top and bottom of the board. 
And then I got my staple gun and put one staple horizontal and one vertical so that it was in a bit of a cross in the spot that I wanted each of my buttons. I then super glued these buttons into place and I just put my weights on them for half an hour to an hour just to kind of make sure that something was heavy and holding them down. And voila, that's pretty much it. So one thing to note, as I mentioned at the beginning, is that David and I have this one by four here and basically that's just because of the curve of our van. Um, it's not something that you for sure need, but it is something that if your kind of board is at a tilt backwards at the bottom, you might wanna add. To secure it in place, we got this handy dandy fastener from Amazon. As you can see, there's a piece on the top of the board here and then there's a piece on the wall and this just slides in. Like that. So there you have it guys. This actually was a lot easier than I thought it would be to make. I think in total it was like $189 or something for all the materials and it's custom. It's the color I want. It's the size we want. We couldn't be happier with it. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free to reach out with any questions or um, tell me how your van build's going, how your cushions are going. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and share it with your friends. Um, hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more van stuff and some more of our adventures right now in Canada and later hopefully around the world. See you next week.